Hello everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in to another episode in the series. Uh, in the last episode we went ahead and actually updated or, or created our little form here the user can fill out to actually add uh, items to our database. And so today I just kind of wanted to briefly, well, make this episode a little bit shorter. The last one got a little out of hand. Um, but I also just wanted to introduce the database inspector here. Uh, so this tab here does exactly what it says, uh, but for all of our room tables, we have a nice little panel here where we can go ahead and investigate all the data that is uh, currently present in our database, and then we can actually even modify it and run some specific queries uh, over this data. So the room master table, we don't have control over. It's just something that room does as well. Uh, to keep its versioning and stuff like that. But the one that we do have here, the item entity table, actually matches up with our um, you know, entity here. And the two by database is actually what we end up calling the database as well. So if we had multiple, you'd be able to look at the different uh, databases and what they have there. So uh, if you click on one to expand it, you can see the structure and kind of the definition of all the columns. And then this, guy, this little icon here to signify that this field is the primary key. So I'm just going to go ahead and close that to give ourselves a little bit more room to work with. And then you can see here uh, the actual information that exists in our database. So you could hit this or, or see the same information if you were to hit um, you know, a, a breakpoint at some point and actually look at all the data. It's just another useful tool here. Uh, however, one thing I kind of wanted to show here is that uh, I need to clean up the fact that this description is empty instead of null, but you can see this little gap here. So if we just go ahead and very quickly modify this, uh, let's say description from the outside, and we hit enter. We can see here that nothing has actually changed in our UI, and if you watched the last episode, uh, when we add a new item to our database from here and go back, we also don't update the UI, and so that's a separate issue that we have. However, you could see that there's clearly no description here. And then if we go ahead and actually kill the application, run it again, you can see here that now we actually have our data reflected in the UI. So if we were actually observing changes that were in effect to or that were happening to our table in real time, when I hit enter after typing this description from the outside in this field, uh, it would immediately reflect here. But since we are currently not doing that, uh, we have to just restart the application. And then we pull everything out of the database and, and show it to the user. There are other options here to have uh, live updates if you want to see them, or otherwise you could manually refresh the table if you were to modify them in the uh, application and for some reason it was was taking some time and then in here as well we can do the open new query tab on our specific database and then you can actually just run a query here so we're just gonna say select uh, let's say select priority uh, select priority where straining my SQL skills here um, okay Took me a little bit longer than I wanted to <laughs> admit. I haven't written some SQL in quite a while here, but go ahead and write just a little statement here. It says select our priority from the item entity table where our ID equals this. So if you're not too familiar with SQL, um, we're basically telling it what properties to select. So the classic star here means select everything, but otherwise you can actually select individual fields uh, that exist on that table from is telling the query what table it's supposed to be looking in and then where is basically like a conditional you know where this is true uh, blah 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 so uh, we, we ran that we have priority three and if we take a look at this is the ID that we had the first one here if we look at the priority there it is two uh, three excuse me so you can run some queries here on your actual data which is useful if you're either trying to learn SQL or maybe trying to figure something out or if you want to end up debugging something and understanding why it's not working you can do so within the database inspector so it's a pretty nifty panel to have in my opinion it's nice to see especially when you get different tables in here you can just very quickly see you know what's the snapshot of our data at this moment in time 
and sometimes that's just enough information you need to solve whatever issue you're looking at here. Um, you also saw that I can, you know, or we can modify things on the fly here. And so in the next episode, we're actually going to go ahead and change our implementation so that we can uh, receive these updates in real time. And that would also solve the problem of when we add a new element to the list, that when we go back, the element isn't there. So we'll go ahead and fix that so that it actually does show up when it should. And in order to do so, it's just a few small tweaks that we need. We're not far off and we're going to introduce uh, flow from Kotlin and the whole coroutines world to interact with our database. So stick around for the next one. Thanks for dropping by here and I'll catch you in the next one.